Wow, that show hope, that's uh, amazing stuff. Thank you. That, that's a, a wonderful testament. Um, oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he hath done wonderful things. In this life, we all have unforgettable experiences, and such is the case with me. One day, sitting in my office, my good friend, Mac McAnally, came in and said, you've got to hear this. Well, in a, a business where that phrase can be thrown around so indiscriminately, he was right. And I beheld and I heard the voice of angels. And they numbered six. At times they sounded like 10,000 times 10,000, but they numbered six. Now, no matter your theology, Take Six continues to serve as a shining example the world over of what unshakable faith can do. It's a, a distinct privilege and pleasure for me to be here and to see their wonderful contribution to the world of music recognized in this fashion as they deliver a truly new song. Kurt? Thanks, Jim. What an honor it is to stand beside this guy as well. He's done a couple of cool things as well, right? But the coolest is to have signed these guys. I got to tell you, you have an award, my brother, that's going to be so huge you'll need people to carry it for you. Very quickly, let's take a, 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 a gander at um, Mark and Joey in their diapers. Uh, no, just kidding. No, just <laughs> watch the video. At Oakwood University in Huntsville, Alabama, in an auditorium bathroom, the smooth jazz vocal stylings of Take Six was born. Assembled by its founding member, Claude McKnight, this group then, known as Gentlemen's Estate Quartet, began to take its shape and mold their a cappella sound. The musical echoes from their bathroom rehearsal soon attracted the ear of tenor Mark Kibble, who added the fifth part. The group hit the stage that very night. Weeks later, Kibble invited Mervyn Warren into the lineup, which added to the rich vocal blend. The group soon began performing under the name Alliance. I mean, we just started rolling from there, and it was like, man, this is a different thing because everybody on campus had a quartet or a trio, and we were sexed at. It was like, okay, we, we got all you guys beat now. Their unique sound caught the ear of Warner Brothers executive Jim Ed Norman from a cassette demo passed along to him. However, after seeing them perform at an impromptu showcase, Jim Ed knew he had to have this group on the Warner roster and sign them the next day. Under their new identity as Take Six, it wasn't long before the world would take notice of this fresh, new vocal blend in both the jazz and gospel arenas with the 1988 release of their self-titled debut project. This groundbreaking a cappella recording would go on to garner two Grammy Awards and command the attention of the critics as well as top spots on the Billboard charts in both the contemporary jazz and contemporary Christian genres. From their inaugural release, Take Six has gone on to record more than a dozen albums and have received numerous awards and honors, which include 10 Grammy Awards, 10 Dove Awards, and a Soul Train Music Award. Heralded as the baddest vocal cats on the planet from super producer and music legend Quincy Jones, Take Six has collaborated with some of music's finest and iconic artists who include Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder, Ella Fitzgerald, Al Jarreau, and Brian McKnight, just to name a few. I'm so proud to be in your family and to have you in mind. I want to congratulate you from the bottom of my heart for winning the Gospel Music Hall of Fame Award. So deserving. God bless you. I love you. Planted solid in their Seventh-day Adventist faith, Current members Claude, Mark, Alvin, David, Joel, and Christian, and former members Cedric and Mervyn continue to perform on main stages around the globe while staying true to their gospel music roots and heritage. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in welcoming former and current members of Take Six.
I, okay, I'm just going to stand here. On behalf of the Board of Directors of the Gospel Music Association Foundation, it is my honor to induct Take Six into the GMA Hall of Fame. <laughs> I'm going to say a little bit, and I'm going to try to have all the guys say a little bit. It will probably take about 25 minutes, if that's all right. Uh, you know, many, many years ago, I was probably eight or nine years old growing up in Buffalo, New York. I used to go to choir rehearsal with my mom on Friday nights, and I, I was too young to actually sing in the choir at that time. But my grandfather, Fred Willis Sr., was the, the director of the choir, and I knew from that point on, I was like, this is the coolest guy I've ever seen in my life, and I want to have a group one day. Many years after that, uh, I got to Oakwood as a freshman and started a quartet, as you, as you saw on the tape. And true story, we used to rehearse in a bathroom all the time, and this gentleman came in and added a fifth part to what we were doing and became the architect of the Take Six sound. We have eight guys up here tonight because we are our family. And it was very important when we learned of this uh, induction ceremony, that was one of the first things we decided we were, we said, we have to have everybody here. And this is groundbreaking for us. You may not know, but we haven't been on stage all together like this in well over 20 years. Yeah. So the really cool thing was sound check this afternoon. You had to have been here. You know, even in the, before that, the room, uh, the dressing room, just going over the old songs, and Mervyn Warren remembering his parts. That's right. No, no, no. He was at least 73% there. I think that's the number he gave us, 73%? Yes, yes, yes. So it's a, it's a wonderful thing. Um, we are so happy and so honored to be a part of this. And anyone else who wants to jump in, please, please, gentlemen, come to the... Contrary to popular belief, I'm not a new base. I'm retaining a little water. I've been there since the beginning, so you can quit asking me that when I got in the group. I've always been there. Two quick things. We win the award for having the most amazing fan that came the farthest distance. Michiko came in tonight from Tokyo, Japan. Give her a hand. Michiko Matsura. We love you. Second of all, these men standing behind us represent families, many, 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 many families who have prayed for us. Six, eight knuckle-headed black men that stuck together all these years, thank you. And it also represents many, many birthdays, anniversaries, graduations that we have missed. That we have missed but we're still here and we have our families. We love you, that's all. Thank you so much, GMA. <laughs> I must speak because this is so surreal. This is so surreal. First of all, um, there are so many of you out there that we know, and we haven't seen you in a long time but we know that you've played a huge part in us being here. From Jackie Patello, who just uh, gave me the call and said, okay, would you like to do this? And I, how could I say no? Jim Ed, from the very beginning, and for those that, are, that know her, Gail Hamilton, our first manager. Yes. Yes. That's right, who did so much, Gene Wilson, to our last manager and present, Ed Keane, who is doing marvelous work for us. But, um, and so, so, so many. Mac, thank you so much for passing that tape. <laughs> A miracle happened at that point. But it's not just about that. It is about the fact that we have been through so much. It's amazing that we are still together. Groups usually don't stay together so long. But God has a purpose for us. And he took us through so many deep valleys, teaching us so many hardcore lessons. And, you know, that's the way God does. In order for, you, for him to use you, sometimes he has to break you. Break you into small pieces and then rebuild you again. 
And that's exactly what he's done with us. It's amazing what he has done. And I'm going to tell you, when we're back there in the dressing room singing, I can't tell you what was going through my heart because the guy that was in the trenches with me back in, no, back in high school, Mervyn Warren. All right, all right. You know, we have, we have developed a lot of love for each other going through these things, but we go back, dude. We go back. We struggled through the trenches way back before Take Six was even thought of. And to see him here today with us, I know it's been a long time. And brother, I have to let you know I love you from the bottom of my heart. We all do. We all do. Cedric Dent, mommy. This is one of the, one of the dudes that, that showed us how to get it done. Showed us the ropes. He, an amazing, talented producer, arranger, writer, and now educator. We said, we always said that Take Six was gonna be a springboard for all kinds of other things that we would do, but now we see you being so successful and we are so proud to be associated with you. <laughs> yeah, that's you. That's you. And with, for each one of my brothers here, we know, we get, before every single show, we come together, we share deeply, we pray together, we lift up the Lord, we share our burdens, and we lift each other up, and we hold each other up. We don't know how many deep valleys we've been in, fighting in the trenches with each other. And that's what it's all about. Because if it weren't for God just coming into our lives and giving us a chance not just to sing, but to be saved. That's salvation. These brothers have held me up. And all the healing that can happen in the world happens because these brothers and the families and the friends around us are praying for us. We find forgiveness. We find God's grace. We find his anointing. And nothing can be more powerful than that. So I promise you, yeah, we're going to keep on singing. Because we're still doing it. Contrary to what you all might believe out there. We're still here. We still have a testimony to share that changes the lives. We've seen lives change all over the whole world. We thank God for that. We thank God for what he's given through us. Wow. Bill Gaither, you came to my house. That means so much to us, a big supporter of us. We love you so much and we thank you. I, I see you all over the place, faces that I haven't seen in so long. Thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna take a long time because everybody else did. <laughs> no, we thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts to the GM, GMA, Dr. Jones, everybody. You know, y'all can come up here and say some more. I, I sit by here. I'm gonna say something really quick. I am the, the newest and youngest Thank you. No, no. Um, I wasn't born into this group. I actually snuck, literally snuck into a concert and four years later became a member. No one else gets to sneak in now because I want to keep my spot. But I want to say to you guys, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, 10 years ago, I started subbing for, for said, and I am a better man today I am a better man today because of God and the Holy Spirit leading you guys to allow me into your family. I'm a better father, I'm a better husband, I'm a better man. I met more Jesus in, on tour buses and in, in smelly dressing rooms in Paris because of you guys. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I love you guys, you're forever my brothers. I appreciate you, love you man. Thank you, GMA. Awesome. All right, look, so this whole thing is about how your father really wants to save you. These are, were eight examples of how God wants to save people. The 12 disciples were 12 different personalities 
and textbook uh, examples of what God can do with every different kind of personality. We've gone through some of everything up here. I want you to remember this. Anything in the Bible that you've read, be holy. Walk perfect before me. Love your enemies. Bless people who curse you. He's never asked you to do that in your own power. And our mistake is we've tried to do it in our own power, thinking that's what he asked us to do. He never did. If that were possible, he would never have to send Jesus Christ. All he was ever asking you to do is let me put my son inside of you and he will live out his perfect life inside you. That's all I want you to do. Don't ask me for my power so you can do it. Just let him do what he already knows how to do inside you. And when that happens, there are no limits. There are no people that you can't love. There's no forgiveness that cannot happen because it's not coming from inside you. There's no child you cannot adopt. There's nobody that you can't take in. That really is what spread love is all about. Not that it comes from you, but that it comes from Jesus Christ who knows how to spread his love from inside your skin to all these other people. Would you please take that from here and let him do what he already knows how to do? And by the way, it's all fixed. It's a win-win situation. He's already planned and completed your salvation. It's a win-win situation already. That's to somebody who didn't know that. He's already got it fixed. Again, because Jesus knows how to do what he does. He just wants to do it inside you. Spread love. I'm going to take a moment to say that... Uh, being up here is so, like Mark said, surreal. And we're so blessed to be here. We say all the time that if what we do is just about getting those of us that are on stage into the kingdom, it's well worth it. Because we've been through so much. We've shared so much loss. Every, every marriage, every, every child born is like our own children. Every loss, we feel deeply. But we're still here. Praise God. And I just want to say happy birthday to my dad. Happy birthday. Man. So how about they sing? What do you think? Okay. Oh, would y'all, uh, yeah. yeah, watch the step. Yeah, yeah. Now, you probably thought that was rain, didn't you? That was the angels applauding for what was about to happen. And they told me as they set up, I could, uh, tell a very quick vignette about how I first heard Take Six. I was, I, I went to New York to record an album uh, with the great Bob James. And Bob wouldn't even let me put my stuff down. He said, come here, you gotta hear this. And I'm like, can I use the bathroom first? He's like, no, come over here. So I'll go and I sit down. And for the next 50 minutes, I heard a brand new sound. And how many times can you say that, you know, that you heard something that you had not heard before? It's kind of like hearing Hendrix for the first time or, or, you know, Paganini or somebody. But the thing that I loved about what I heard, obviously, was the impact of the Spirit of God in that music. But please allow me to say this, because I think this one thing is missing in much of Christian music. It was virtuosity. It was virtuosity and innovation that I heard. And that was the thing, when, when David played skillfully before God, that's the thing, as far as I'm concerned, that is really missing in a lot of Christian music. Everybody's making a joyful noise, but not everybody's making a skillful noise. Ladies and gentlemen, here is a skillful noise. Check, check. A lot of Christian testosterone up here. We've got to get our space. I'm a minister from over here.
I was going to say, how do you follow that, right? They're coming back. This must be a good sign. The important part. Let's give them another round of applause. In its 64-year history, World Vision has facilitated